you mentioned LaGuardia High School, also known as uh, Music, Music and Art. Art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody around the country, around the world who is listening to this, that is the same high school that the TV show and movie Fame was based around, uh, based upon. Uh, when you went to this high school, were there any other people who we may know that was in the high school with you at that same time? So yeah, this, so um, Jennifer Aniston was there. And Jennifer I, Aniston, like friends, Jennifer Aniston? Wow. And she was, I don't want to use the word fat because I hate that, but she was like very thick back then. And I only knew who she was. This is crazy because her dad used to play on my mom's favorite soap opera. He played a character named Victor Kiriakis. And I yep. saw her last name and I was like, are you? So that's how I knew her. And then Chastity Bono, Sonny and Cher's daughter, now son, she went there. We all knew about her, but she was kind of always to herself. And then Cherise from Changing Faces, do you mind if I stroke you yeah. up? I don't. Actually, Cherise and Cassandra, both of the girls from Changing Faces, we all were there together. Um, Cassandra was my cheerleading captain and Cherise simply was my friend. And we've been best friends until, I mean, we're still best friends to this day, so. Wow, wow. How, you know, and I don't want to stay on the subject for too long, but I, when I think of music and arts, I think of fame. And by thinking of fame, I think of kids being in the hallway and they're singing, like not a traditional high school. In real life, was it, you know, you just named a number of people that have gone on and have done great things. We all know them. What's in real life, was it like that? You would just walk past classrooms and people are singing or acting or they're going down the hall and they're doing these little performances? Always. Are you Always. serious? Absolutely, especially in the lower level in the basement where it was the drama department mm -hmm. because um, the teachers understood that creativity can pop up at any given moment. So if there were a group of us, as long as we were doing something to our to our talent or to our what, they would walk by us. They didn't ask us if we were supposed to be in class. They didn't ask us where we were supposed to be. If if they saw someone walking up and down rehearsing a monologue, they didn't bother them. There was a huge respect of the of the of the arts. And more focus, I say, on the arts than the academics but the respect for the way an artist creates and processes and gets in their zone mm -hmm. is what I think may, is, is what made, um, is what taught us how to get in the zone and that is okay. And that things don't necessarily come to you when they're supposed to, but you gotta grab that moment. So if I needed to leave a classroom and go into the girls' bathroom and go over something, I was able to do, it was a very free, a free, uh, I don't want to say free fall, but free wheeling school with, with um, emphasis on talent and creativity. Nicki Minaj went there much later than, than I, the uh, Marlon Wayans, I think went there. Omar Epps went there. Yeah. There's a lot of people who came out of that school and that's why I was just, and I didn't even originally intend to ask you that question, but I'm thinking it's, she had to be in there with some people who we knew. Can I ask you something now? And this is kind of out of context of where I want to take the interview, but it could possibly help somebody. You again, come from a family that stressed academics, but you're clearly a creative person. Even just hearing you um, a second ago describe how it was uh, encouraged for students to express your creativity. It might, it might not come when you're sitting and you're taking a test and you're put on the spot. It could come at any given moment. Right. As a parent now, and for any parents who are out there, you lived in both worlds. Like you, you know what it is for somebody to be like, this is the proper way um, to achieve success, meaning go to school, get your education. And you also are somebody who went a very non-traditional route and achieved high level success. 
what is your advice for parents that, that has a young girl or boy who is not as interested in the books, still very bright, still has a lot of potential, but they're just off the beaten path. Do you encourage that? Like, what's the balance? And I am that parent because my oldest son is in this like top, top five prep boarding school that's like heavy on the academics and heavy, but he's a musician. He calls himself Jalen the Rapper. He is self-taught. He does his own videos. He saves his own money to go into the recording studios. So how can I get in the way of that? I'd be a hypocrite. Mm -hmm. But I also show him the difference in, <laughs> in how our lifestyle shifted. Once, I was when I was in the industry and he was born and he saw the, the lavish lifestyle. And then when I left the industry and the check slowed down, he saw that. So he understands what he wants his life to, what he might want his life to look like. And so I just tell him, look at this example. Nothing stays on top forever. You've always got to prepare and life doesn't wait for you to become a rapper. One day you're gonna wanna get married. Is it fair for your wife to wait for you to hit it big? And she has to have two and three jobs just to support the lifestyle that you're accustomed to or that you want. So you have to pay attention to the years going by you and at least set a timeline on how long you're going to give yourself to achieve that goal. Because you and I both know it never comes when we want it to come. Never. And life will pass you by. I was 35 before I turned around and I was great. I had just gotten my, I was the first black woman to get morning radio. I was doing well in Philadelphia, but I remembered I forgot to have a baby. Right, right. Damn, <laughs> good, I, go ahead, Jonesy. <laughs> I, these didn't plan. I love, these are conversations I love. Go ahead. I forgot to have a baby. So the, the first idiot that, you know, treated me good and I thought was cute and came around at that time, I made that into a, a situation, but I, I don't wanna, so I love my son, not necessarily his dad, but again, it was because I didn't prepare and no one told me it's all right to chase your dreams, but don't ball all of your dreams up and forget about your real life. So many gems, so many gems. And I and I thank you for even sharing it and just being uh, so transparent and open because these are the things people need to hear. It's okay, go chase your dreams, but there is, it's real life in this So Life is right, life is still going. You still getting older, you're missing out. You're, you know, you're missing out on, on, on certain opportunities in life because you're so focused on that. So if I had to do it over again, I would have paid more attention to the personal achievements and not so much the professional ones. Mm -hmm. And I would have planned things out or at least tried to plan them out a little better. But you, you, I don't know how that would have worked out. But for my son, I'm on him. He's going to have a life. It won't be consumed with being a rapper. It won't even be consumed with being a doctor. It won't be consumed. I want him to have a piece of everything. And once you have a piece and you try everything, then somewhere down the line, you can figure out what you're really passionate about and what works within your reality. Beautiful, well said, well said, well said. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.